The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Then he summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and every illness. Jesus sent out those 12 after instructing them thus, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go make this proclamation, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, drive out demons. Without cost, you have received. Without cost, you are to give. The Gospel of the Lord. I think the main lesson of St. Ambrose for us today, he lived uh, in the last part of the 300s. So it was still very, very early in the church. The main lesson for, for us today is watch out because God will work in your life in surprising and unexpected and even unusual ways. Ambrose was a very, very successful administrator, governor, lawyer. He was brilliant. And the emperor recognized that. In fact, he put him in charge of much of what we would now call Northern Italy as the governor. Now there was a problem in Milan, and that problem was that the bishop had just died. The bishop, however, was an Arian. We recognize the Arians as heretics. They followed the um, teaching of a priest from a hundred years earlier or so named Arius who came up with a brilliant idea as to how to understand the divinity of Jesus Christ because what he said was he was not equal to God but rather God had given him <coughs> excuse me God had given him a special share in his divinity, but he was subordinate to the Father. And people said, yeah, that makes sense. The orthodox position, of course, was that, and this had been defined in the Council of Nicaea, was that Jesus Christ was fully God, not just participating in God's nature, but fully God, as well as fully human which would enable him then to lead us to participate in that nature because he had become one of us. For Arius and the Arians, it was kind of almost like Jesus was play acting, that, he, that God had taken on something of a human mask in, in Jesus. So that city of Milan was divided between Arians and Orthodox Christians. And the bishop who had just died, he was Arian. And there arose a big dispute. In fact, people were rioting in the streets about who should follow this 
who should follow that bishop as the new bishop. And of course, each one had their own candidates. Now, Ambrose was the governor. His job was to try to keep the peace. He seemed to be a committed Christian, but he was not yet baptized. He was only a catechumen. So he was only still learning. He was in kind of an apprenticeship to become fully Christian through baptism. But he was not yet there. So what did he do? He went into the midst of that crowd and shouted out, peace. Let yourselves be guided by the Holy Spirit in this decision. But do not be fighting about it. Don't be killing one another, which they probably were doing over this decision. He acted as a good civil magistrate, as a good governor trying to bring about peace. He had no, he had no inkling of what was going to happen next. Because after he had quieted down the crowd, there was a child's voice that came from the crowd. And the child's voice said, Ambrose for bishop. And everybody else looked at the kid and said, yeah. Ambrose for bishop, Ambrose for bishop. And that's what they all together brought them together in a most unusual way. Brought them together to cry out, Ambrose for Bishop. I am sure at that point that was the very last thing that he wanted to hear. Because he knew what change that would require in his life. But when all of the people for whom he was the civil governor, were shouting together, Ambrose for bishop, he kind of thought, you know, maybe I had better listen. And so he said, yes, okay. What was the first thing he did? He was a wealthy man, powerful man. He, of course, resigned his governorship, and he sold nearly all of his property. He got rid of his wealth. He got rid of the worldly stuff that would encumber him. And then he went and had himself baptized because he was not yet a baptized Christian. Baptized and confirmed, and of course, he had to be ordained. Ordained a priest, well, a deacon first, and then a priest, and then and then a bishop. And that was his, what he did in order to say yes to what was obviously the will of God coming forth. Now he, he reigned as bishop for about 20 years. And he was a beloved figure. He was a powerful figure. In fact, he even um, got the emperor on his knees in penitence for a rather disastrous, dastardly deed that the emperor did, uh, killing 20,000 people in a fit of anger. Uh, they didn't have tweets in those days, so he had to do things in a different way. But uh, he, um, he was immensely well-regarded, successful, and a great theological writer. But you know what? The greatest thing that he did, and I don't think he realized it fully at this time, he made a little bit like John the Baptist. Because there is one person from the other side of the Mediterranean Sea who came and sought him out and wanted to listen to him and wanted to find out just what was this wonderful teaching he was doing? And that, of course, was Augustine. He came from an obscure city on, in north of Africa, but he came and listened, came to Milan and listened to him and was moved by him. And I think in baptizing Augustine, Ambrose became a little bit like John the Baptist in, rela in relationship to Jesus. 
because not everybody these days has really heard of Ambrose. But most everybody who is a sincere Christian has in some way heard of Augustine. And so Augustine was the one who, the disciple, who far outshone his master, even though his master was himself a great leader and a great person. So Ambrose's final claim to distinction was not what he did in relation to the emperor or all of his writings. His final claim for distinction was he was the one who baptized and instructed St. Augustine, who went back as bishop of his home territory in North Africa and became probably the greatest teacher before Thomas Aquinas that, uh, that the church had known. So watch out for the strange ways that God may work in your life, even sometimes uh, calling us to the things that we may not want, even in our own situation here. Be careful of the, the things that are, are put upon you that you may not really find agreeable or pleasant or that you want because that may be God calling you to something greater.